Okay, I've made it down to Venice Beach. Um, and I got no hat on, so I am now a good, a good civilian. I am a good, clean civilian who is not committing the hat-wearing crime that gets you hunted down by the the D Dinsey Chainsaw Massacre family. Um, and uh, because it's either sex of the saw for that boy. Okay, so. Um, with the entire judicial system, psychology community going up through Congress and the Senate. That's pretty fucking interesting. Um, okay, so, oh, that's a mopeder. So you see, I, I almost hit him by being still at a stop sign. Okay, so, um, uh, let's see, we're in Venice Boulevard. Let's do the motor neuron time warp. Okay, so I just accessed the most inner regions of my brain, this introvert. By the way, being an introvert is a crime. Remember that. So, so this, introver this introvert is on the run. Man on the run. Man on the run. Okay, never mind. Whoa, oh, that wasn't me. That was um, the horde protecting me. Okay, so anyways, uh, because I'm a violent paranoid schizo, uh, I just feel like relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. I know I'm not allowed to relax, but I had a moment to relax and access the most inner uh, motor neuron functions to the deepest recesses of my brain. And we are down on Venice Beach. We've made it to Venice Beach, getting out of my Aggie, Maggie Aggie cage uh, because I am cogging it. And, um, whoa, the first thing that came out of the Pandora, or Andorra's box, the Pandora's box, is the name Aubrey Fisher. Aubrey Fisher, you are the lucky winner and contestant. Come on down and explain why you are working with Rody Morales working with the LAPD and Tom Farley to hunt me down and have my kind eradicated with the Kevin is weird crime. Wait, isn't everyone kind of weird to anyone else that doesn't really know them or understand them? But in Kevin's life, Kevin's life, it's a crime. I've committed the crime. The Aubrey Fisher doesn't understand me with the LAPD psychology community government. So I've committed a crime of not being understood. So I need to be hunted and killed. Or locked in jail cells or mental institutions. Uh, or pushed to blow my brains out. Okay. So, Aubrey Fisher. Let's trace back, rewind to... Uh, <laughs> to I know I'm, I'm, I'm back to the sarcasm crime, I know. But, but most importantly, I'm not wearing the hat crime. Okay. So, um, Rody Morales sent after me by LAPD. Mike Huntley wanted me to go to the gym. I had worked out at the gym on and off my entire life since 14, or with weightlifting benches. Mike Huntley mad about that. Same with my family, and they were mad because I had a stereo and I listened to music, and some of those music was like uh, Damn Yankees, Dawkins. Uh, all crimes because uh, damn Yankees um, that mentions Civil War things right so that's got to be a crime um, it makes perfect sense okay and um, uh, where are we going where are we going where okay so um, <laughs> uh, back to the past. Okay, so um, oh, and by the way, when I talk about my past, that means I suffer from obsessional looping, and that's a a type of mental Ill, uh, mental Ill, eh, mental illness. So I suffer from obsession because I'm talking about my past. Because people don't talk about their past ever, or else, or else he sounded oval. Okay, so. Um, Mike Huntley mad with Eric Christensen that I buy a Lord's Gym t-shirt joking around at a jokey t-shirt shop in Ashland, Oregon. They send Eric Christensen after me and at the same time 
they send um, Sherry Christensen from Diamond Dorm to come over to Emerald Hall, where I was, stalking me in twos. And their argument, like everyone else, is that you offended me with this jokey Christian-y Lord's Gym shirt, so you ruined our lives and we have the license to hunt you down and kill you with worldwide support, uh, judicial system, Senate, Congress, and White House decisions. Oh, and the psychology community. Because I fucked with them. Even though I had no clue who the fuck they were buying the shirt, and it wouldn't matter anyways. Okay, so, that's 21, 20, I'm not sure. Let's jump back to 27, 26, I'm not sure. Mike Huntley in California, mad that I buy a shirt in Ashland, Oregon. Yes, I know what you're thinking, if you're a sane, rational person. How the fuck... Oh, I committed the fuck crime. How the fudge... How the fudge... Oogie doogie... Uh... (laughs) Dirty birdies... Uh, would this... How the fudge would Mike Huntley... How the... (laughs) How the fudge would Mike Huntley know... That I bought a Lord's Gym in Southern Oregon State College. Linked to Eric Christensen. Also wanting to take me down... To San Diego PD with a girl named Jen and Kat, uh, working all these tactics to try to cover up my brother's child abuse with my family, where my brother tried to claim that I tried to kill him with a knife and all weird sorts of shit like this. Mister, I'm going out on my road rage runs, and we're running cars off the road, and all this this shit is running around. Oh, poor me. Oh, poor me. Kevin tried to kill me because I keep bullying him. Oh, poor me. Okay, right? Something seemed a little off there. With the LAPD, NSA, FBI, government. Oh, poor me. Okay, right, mister, I'm going to hunt you down with worldwide resources. Oh, poor me. He's making me do it. Okay, so. So, um. Hence why they don't want me talking about these things. And locking me away in jail cells or mental institutions. Because Jason's a good murderer. And I'm a horrible, mean monster because I'm too nice. Okay, so, um. Uh, where was I? Notice how the, all these events are connected. They don't want me talking about these things. They want to say he's crazy. He suffers from obsession. Mike Huntley at 27 then wants to take me to the gym by my house. Connected to Eric Christensen, San Diego PD, set up and frame job attempts and operations. Uh, with Mike Wexler, my brother's friend, he sent after me at Southern Oregon or University of Colorado. Jason Baum, my brother, sent after me at University of Colorado. Uh, who else? Jason Baum, Mike Wexler, some redhead they were trying to set me up with uh, to get me to go after, or look like I am full of anger and rage. Um, there was another one of my brother's friends from University of Colorado. I can't remember which one it was. Um, It'll come back to me very quickly. Uh, no, uh, no, didn't work that time. Okay, so, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I can't stop laughing because of the fucking absurdity. Okay, so, um, where are we here? Mike Huntley wanting to sent me to sign up to the gym on Burbank and DeSoto. I don't remember what it was back then, like a world's or gold's. And uh, his whole thing was to try to say that Kevin's a monster and a schizo and this and that because of the Lord's Jim shirt. Well, they tried to Lord's Jim me to death. Uh, his pain, your gain type of thing. Okay. For buying a t-shirt that my mommy and daddy didn't like or something like this weird, right? It goes to the psychology community, NSA, FBI. Doesn't make much sense. Okay. So, um, oh, by the way, I've been out in Hermosa and Redondo, and I've seen other people with these shirts. Nobody cares. Uh, oh, and I bought I bought a new one at ChristianBook.com. Christian Book doesn't care. Uh, they even sell them because they go, ah, oh, that's funny. Okay, so um, sorry, doing one of those illegal U turns and letting someone cross the crosswalk, and because they're still breathing, I committed a crime. Okay, so, um, oh, my phone's crooked again. My phone is crooked. We're Dutch again. We committed the Dutch 
crime where all the women were a white copy me and do crooked watermarks on their pictures. But I'm not supposed to know that because I'm a violent paranoid schizo. And they can't admit that everyone knows me because that's the whole idea behind, behind giving someone a friendly smile while making them look like a violent paranoid schizo for no reason at all. They're just doing it because that's the way gravity works or water flows or waves flow. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Um, so, we sign up to... We sign up to Lord's Gym. Or, sorry, Mike Huntley wants to join the gym. He shows me this video, this promotional video about bettering yourself and this and that and some kind of contest to be the healthiest person and win. Or whatever, I don't know. Some promotional video. And I go, Mike, I'll join the gym and work out again. But I'm not doing that whole promotional whatever contest. So Mike does it. I don't. I say I'll spot you. I'll work out with you. You can spot me. The whole time, all the same shit we're seeing worldwide is done to me at the gym. I don't even realize what's going on. Mike Huntley's trying to make it look like I'm stalking people. Strippers like Envy are, are playing games like I'm stalking them because um, I need to use the workout equipment and then they disappear and never come back. Uh, there was a girl, blonde girl named Laura, um, pissed off at me for flirting with her. Um, there was a Hungarian I was flirting with where Rody Morales was telling me that her her boyfriend was a mobster or something. And then um, I was sort of flirting with her. And then I, around that time frame, I take a two-week break. And then the world's told that I'm fucking with her because... Kevin Perlman is not allowed to ever take breaks from lifting at the gym. Not even for two weeks. So you can see how the disinformation is flowing to the world based on things that don't matter. Okay. Back to the sidetracked point because all these things are interconnected with billions of people. Um, Mike Huntley wants me to join the gym for the sole reason to meet the gym manager, Rody Morales, to hint that I have road rage. Things like that. Which was really all my brother's shit. And Mike Huntley was originally my brother's friend. Okay, so... Um, after this... Um, Rody Morales befriends me and he kind of wants to weasel into my life. Now, I don't know... At the time, there's newspaper clippings... Of Rody Morales from the Daily News that I have now working with the LAPD to catch some murderer that has lived a double life. And Rody was helping the LAPD catch a murderer. Now, don't you find it interesting? Because remember, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm just thinking I'm working at the gym, working out at the gym and I'm getting healthy. And Rody's weaseling in my life. He's working with Mike Huntley setups and frame jobs. Uh, the guy, I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with and have a good life now. And then after that, they're telling the world that I supposedly killed someone or that I'm schizo and think that I killed someone. I can't tell you what they're saying, but I have tons of people, even recorded, stating that they think I've killed someone. So if they're trying to say that Kevin just flipped out and is a schizo or got paranoid, well, then people wouldn't be saying these things. Okay, the point is that Rody, uh, Mike Huntley wanted me to meet Rody Morales. He sort of manipulated the situation. And then after that, uh, Rody Morales... Uh, Rody Morales... Um, wants to go to strip clubs. He wants to take me to strip clubs. The fourth person. He wants to do it all websites. He wants to take me to strip clubs. Yes, I was already doing it all websites. But that's irrelevant. He wants to take me to strip clubs... Fourth person, Eric Christensen. Yes, Eric Christensen. Southern Oregon State College. Um, Val Morozov from University of Colorado. Uh, Tom Farley and Rody Morales back in California when they manipulated me back. Uh, with Mike Huntley and my father wanting to get... Uh, get your friends... Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer, I guess, is my family's mentality. Um with Mike Huntley and Jason Perlman. And so um, that's how Rody Morales is kind of sent after me. 
Now, the whole time, Rody Morales is working with the LAPD to try to set me up and frame me, make it look like I'm stalking strippers, make it look like I'm obsessed, make it look like I'm crazy, make it look like I'm violent, paranoid, schizo. At one point, he was trying to make me look like uh, John Nash. Uh, you name it. Anything known to man to rid Kevin Pearl in the world for no reason at all, except for what I know. Um, now, at the same time, Rody Morales introduces me to Aubrey Fisher, a stripper slash model slash hostess girl working on me with Tom Farley and the LAPD. Okay, so first we have to sort of ask, how is this going from Mike Huntley to Tom Farley? Uh, I can't tell you other than it's all connected, right? Tom Farley working on me in eighth grade with Tracy Picos uh, and teacher Vaughn, Miss Vaughn, English class. These all seem to stem around English class and Christy Reynolds because I thought Christy was cute and I kind of couldn't get... I kind of couldn't... I was checking her out a lot. And so my family, they jump from one tan one um, tangent to the next. Like, if you farted, you tried to gas people to death, to death, right? So there's no middle ground in my family. And they all have psychology degrees. So it's scarier than fuck. Uh, they're like Hannibal, little Hannibal electors with secondary psychology degrees. Okay, so um, now you know that Rody Morales is sent after me with the LAPD and Mike Huntley. We're using the system against you. We've given you enough rope to hang yourself with. But wait, what the fuck is this about? When I was five years old, I farted wrong? Because I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong now or then. Despite all the fabricated bullshit the judicial system keeps writing up. There's nothing I've done. I've been a really good person, right? Okay, so so you can link that back to the weird things in high school. Teachers telling me to punch students in English classes. Things that don't make any sense. Okay, if I was a violent, paranoid schizo, I would be out hurt, harming, maiming, and killing, and not holding doors open for people. Okay, so, um, uh, and smiling at girls and flirting with them or whatever. Okay, so, um, Aubrey Fisher is then connected to Rody Morales, and he sends her out to me, Aubrey Fisher, working all these angles, uh, come to the amateur contest, vote for me, whatever, right? The stupid, trivial shit nobody cares about. Uh, wanting to get me into that sort of scene in club, club scene, but the whole time they were angry at me. They, they didn't, they weren't reeling me in because they liked me. They were mad about something and that something links to five years old and it's something nobody could give a flying fuck about, right? Okay. So I know you're like, Kevin, you've totally gone off on some tangents about Aubrey Fisher, but you have to know the background between whys and hows and what they're doing Especially so much so that the judicial system and psychology community kind of want to erase my brain and slam me full of as much medication as possible, shove me in a bouncy room, and have me drooling in a corner so I can't tell you what's really going on. Fudge. So we need to kind of go to Aggie and our pre-crime cogs and ask them what the fuck's really going on. Okay. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I made a movie joke, and if I make a movie joke, I'm conforming to media. Because remember, there's no fucking middle ground in my life. Okay, since five years old. Okay, so Aubrey Fisher, I'm getting to the point. Yes, I'm getting to the 18-minute point here. Aubrey Fisher. Remember, I knew Aubrey Fisher for several years, and so it was these things are continual like everyone else. I knew... Rody Morales for maybe six years, continual setup and frame operations with Victoria Walker and the police and government, uh, strippers worldwide, porn stars worldwide, Michael Bialis, you name it, worldwide people, just we're going to eradicate this guy for no reason. Okay, so Aubrey Fisher, let me think, Aubrey Fisher is mad that I'm getting into studio photography or any photography with Brian Longbotham. Aubrey Fisher is... Mad that I'm going to strip clubs even though she wants me to go to strip clubs. Weird. Aubrey Fisher is inviting me to parties and telling everyone to shit on me. Kind of like the movie Carrie, but not, you know, different. Um, Aubrey Fisher is directly associated to my family and my friends and Tom Farley. Tom Farley is trying to make it look like I'm stalking Aubrey Fisher example... Aubrey Fisher, come out. I'm hosting this event at a bar. Come out. Put yourself on the list. Come out. Okay, sure. 
This is a tiny little club in Santa Monica, two rooms. You're in one room. I come down with Tom Farley. I'm in one room on the left. And eventually, after like 20 minutes, you're like, I'm going to be here to the room on the right. Sounds pretty fucking harmless, right? You veer to the room on the right. Kevin, don't stalk and follow Aubrey Fisher. And you're like, did I miss something? Is that the definition of stalking? Being near someone you know? At a club that they invited everyone to and you to? And there's two rooms. And eventually you're going to migrate from one room to the next. It's inevitable, right? Yeah, let's say I'm there for 10 hours. I'm eventually going to walk to the other room. Kevin, don't stalk Aubrey Fisher. And then Tom Farley would do this thing where he'd call me up at the same time with Aubrey Fisher trying to fuck with me, but really trying to scare me and intimidate me and thug me. Okay? So these weren't little harmless jokes because I'll tell you why. Because Tom Farley wasn't really friends with Aubrey Fisher. I mean, yeah, I might have introduced her to her, to her at the club, but... He wouldn't have known her on that detail where they're getting together conspiring to do these freaky things. That's the point I'm getting, getting at. Um, okay, so now I kind of mentioned the whole Venice thing, right? Venice is a stripper I want to do it with a website with. Mike Huntley puts fraudulent things in the contract. Like, just one thing. I'm not paying attention. Mike Huntley slipping things in the contract. The whole deal's blown for a website. Mike Huntley's trying to make it look like I'm fraudulent. I think the thing he put, like, if, if if there's a breach of contract, we can sue you or something weird. It's not really a big deal because people generally read contracts and they hash out. They hash out what doesn't work. They don't, I don't like your contract. We're going to hunt you and kill you. Right? Okay. So I'm upset about that. But this whole thing was staged. Remember, because Mike Huntley was introducing me to Melody at 16, and I'm being hunted by Worldwide Support for bouncing at a, at a harmless house bachelor party for Melody at 16. That doesn't make any sense, right? So these events are all connected. Um, to try to set me up and frame me and make me look crazy and remove me from society. Okay, so... And Kevin's a bad seed because he met, he was introduced to Melody at 16. So we got to put him in juvenile hall or whatever, right? Okay, so, or jail, or maximum security prison, or kill him. Okay, so, um, the deal's blown with Venice. At one point, I think Aubrey Fisher was also trying to make it look like I was stalking a stripper, saying she wants a website. She asked me about you doing a website, and I'm like, I waited there for 15 minutes, and I'm like, what the fuck am I waiting for? I walk up to the stripper, and I'm like... Aubrey said you were interested in a website. She said, I never say anything. Okay, so Aubrey's trying to make me look crazy, set me up just like Rody Morales with the LAPD and all these other people. Okay, so the deal is blown with Venice. Now, Venice at this point and beforehand, obviously, which I met at Spearmint Rhino, Van Nuys, um, tells me that she's now working down by LAX at Bear Elegance because she wants me to get me close to where Jen Hess lived like six years prior to make it look like I'm obsessed with stalking Jen Hess, okay? Now, remember, there's no connection between these people and Jen Hess. Uh, they're just told by the government, uh, just rid Kevin of the world and help. Okay, so... Then I find out Venice doesn't work there. And I end up meeting Mila and hanging out with Mila. And that's where they really get mad and start working on me and trying to make me look like a violent paranoid schizo and crazy and all this. I'm not going to go into that because I'll get sidetracked. Uh, there's endless lies about Mila as well. Uh, every fucking person on the planet has 100,000 cover-up lies. Okay, so... Um, okay, so we're back to... Aubrey Fisher in Venice. Venice Beach. Okay, so what Aubrey Fisher was doing... What Aubrey Fisher... Do you like my theatrical little neural... Theat theatrical motor neuron jump backs? Or is that too much and do I need to be locked in a mental institution? Okay, so... Now we're back to the paranoid schizo tactics with Aubrey Fisher and everyone else. Aubrey Fisher... I get into photography... 
I've been in photography. I started getting more into studio photography, and Aubrey Fisher gets mad. I sign up to one model place to meet makeup artists and models and fellow photographers, do time for print projects to learn and get better. My family goes ape shit because they don't want pretty women around Kevin Perlman because they don't want kind of like the Paris Hilton thing, right? Okay. So, um, but no sex, no sex or nudity. Um, Aubrey Fisher also gets into photography at the same time to try to play a game how I'm competing with her and trying to ruin her life. The same bullshit tactic they were doing to me at the gyms and colleges and everywhere else. So the things that they, they all, they pull this shit out of their ass, write up fiction and launch worldwide campaigns to eradicate me with this fiction. Defamation, slander, but there's motive behind it to hurt, harm, maim, and kill. To kill or lock away in jail cells or mental institutions by the government, LAPD, my father, things like that. Okay, so, so Aubrey Fisher, first she moves to Sherman Oaks. So anytime I go to Sherman Oaks, I'm committing a crime against Aubrey Fisher by being in the same area that she once was 15 years ago. I mean, how dare I? I'm a stalker. If Aubrey Fisher lived in Sherman Oaks, I'm not allowed in Sherman Oaks. If Jen Hess lived in Torrance or something, I'm never allowed in Torrance or Hermosa or Newport Beach. If, uh, whatever, Chad Bauer that was sent after me lives in Boulder, Colorado, or Mike Wexler or Jason Baum, I'm not allowed in University or Boulder, Colorado because some douchebags live there. It doesn't make any fucking sense, right? And then Mike Huntley will run around saying weird things that I'm too out of control for California, Colorado, Oregon, the United States, Mexico, Philippines, Russia, and Germany, and Japan. Okay. And my breathing is too out of control too as well, so it needs to stop. Okay. So, um... Um... Okay, so, the, so Aubrey Fisher moves to Sherman Oaks. I'm not allowed in Sherman Oaks. And anywhere I go to Sherman Oaks, I'll be killed there. And same with Worldwide. For the crime of being invited to parties at Aubrey Fisher's house and being shit on. Okay, so now I don't really understand these subtle... I don't see the gray... How do you say this? I'm being shit on in such ways that you don't really pick it up because there's no direct communication. It's kind of rare that these things happen. Uh, so you're not really seeing it. So, um, especially moving at locations and the name references to try to make me look like a schizo. Um, so now I put up a website or I think I'm building the erotic ranch system. And I built several adult websites for strippers, porn stars, models, whatever. Aubrey Fisher wants to sabotage all this with my family. And so, um, and the police and government, that's where it really gets strange. And so, um, and prosecutors and defense attorneys like Michael Biles. Why? Why do they care? That I bent over backwards for. Um, so I, I, I built Aubrey Fisher a website for free with pre-built packaged erotic ranch database templated code. And I said, there you go. You have a photography website. I know. I'm a horrible monster because I helped Aubrey Fisher put up a photography website so she could promote her photography. And that means that I'm an angry, jealous, enraged person who's competing with Aubrey Fisher. That's why I put up the website for her, for no charge. Just like the shit, all the shit I did for Tom Varley, for no charge, when I could have been charging the pieces of shit. Okay, because I value... Networking with people, communication, friendship, furthering your career and making money for the bigger picture and not trying to swindle everyone out of every penny of their 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 lives, right? That's what making money in business is all about, not trying to be a thief. Okay, so... Um, at this point, Aubrey Fisher moves. Here we are. It took... 29 minutes to get to the point, but without the details, the point isn't doesn't sound much of anything. Um, Aubrey Fisher moves, yes, to Venice Beach, and she starts doing photo shoots with Venice the Stripper. 
And then she asked me questions. Do you like this picture on my website? And then she starts posting pictures of like children, like a boy with no shirt. So we're not talking ped pedophilia or anything or kitty born. Just a boy in a bathing suit, no shirt at the beach. And she's asking me questions. Do you think that this picture is like pedophilia or things like this? Trying to dig to fish Aubrey Fisher fishing for information to use against me. Okay, now first of all, the picture that Aubrey Fisher put on her website is not a crime. If you go to the beach right now, you'll see children with no shirt on, and that's not any type of crime. But the reason she's asking the questions on the phone is to try to scare me into coerce false confessions or try to get anything to use against me, just like Rody Morales was doing when he said, it's not like you killed someone, did you? When I was starting to find out something was very wrong with these people. Okay, now remember, Rody Morales was working with the LAPD and he was working with Aubrey Fisher and LAPD and the Daily News newspaper clippings I have, I found nine years later, Rody Morales working with the LAPD while working at my gym. It's not disputable, it's not a theory. Okay, so now, Aubrey Fisher is doing photo shoots with Mila from Bear Elegance. Okay, so now, do you see a pattern? Aubrey Fisher is contacting each people that I meet with the police and hunting me down and stalking me. They're trying to make it look like I'm getting closer and closer to Jen Hess. Um, Jen Hess is probably like a undercover cop or FBI agent trying to set me up and frame me for the things that I know that I don't even realize I know. Um, and they don't want me talking, right? Now, there's a whole thing with Jen Hess sent after me 10 years prior they're trying to turn around and cover up as well. Uh, Jen Hess is even running around saying that someone hit her with a mask on and it's me. Yet she comes over to my house the next day with no bruises or anything. I said, I thought you said someone hit you on a, with a mask on, right? Okay, so all these things that are going on are all linked and connected from strangers worldwide um, to eradicate my existence for reasons I can't comprehend, but they all link back to my father and my brother in childhood, all the lies my brother's making up about me, with some personal vendetta to lock me away in a mental institution with this reoccurring theme and threats from my own brother after me stopping him from bashing Greg Wall's head in with a crowbar that he and his friends are gonna put me in a mental institution. It was said a little bit different, but that's what this reoccurring theme to lock me in mental institutions with my family and Jason seem to be. And now the judicial system's trying to reverse it. Kevin's crazy and he wants to be put in a mental institution. So when I go out and I prove my sarcastic jokes with wigs and hats and joking around, the judicial system goes ape shit because I'm saying it I'm I'm exposing the situation for what it is. And the bottom line is, it's not a crime to be crazy, even if I were, was crazy. Um, example, um, let's say I was crazy. Let's say I had a thought process problem. Let's say, like, they're one of their scams, I have a focus issue. Let's say that. Kevin has a focus issue. That's not a crime. So why do they want to put me in a mental institution? Does that make sense? Okay, the only reason people go into mental institutions are pretty much for violence holds. That's it. Um, or if they're so, or if they can't take care of themselves where they're like, uh, uh, I can't put the fork in my mouth and they don't have anyone there to support them, then they might end up in a mental institution. Or they, honestly, they probably wouldn't. They'd probably end up in some kind of hospice or something. You know, okay. So the whole scam about mental institutions this whole thing about mental institutions, they're trying to thug me to check myself into a mental institution or things like Seymour Amster was telling me with Deborah Bear from the Elif Institute, I need to walk up to the judge and tell them I want to be, I want to be checked into a mental institution and freaky shit like this. Okay. And that's all sort of linking back to my family. And then they're running around. What? You want to destroy us? Well, I'm not fucking doing anything to you. I'm sitting here trying to live my fucking life and there's 100,000 to a million people per day trying to eradicate me. And I'm not telling you to tell pay off people to do these things to me or whatever or 
these mass worldwide groups hunting me down. I'm just trying to survive and go out and live my life. And I don't really understand any of what's going on, except I'm watching police and the judicial system try to make me look like a violent paranoid schizo, lock me in jail cells or mental institutions, get me to blow my brains out or remove me from society for being a really fucking good person. And then I prove my points. Example, cruising around um, with a fro wig is not the type of thing that the police hunt you down trying to put you in mental institutions for or the psychology community or anyone else, especially on Hollywood Boulevard where people are walking around expressing themselves in fun things, okay? Or or let's take all my artwork. Oh, I don't like this artwork, so you have to go into a mental institution. I don't like that artwork, so you have to go into a mental institution. Every single piece of art I've ever created. Okay, so we are at 35 minutes. I have sort of jumped to the... I'm out in Venice Beach. How dare I? I've got out of my Maggie Aggie pre-crime cage. My father's Aggie pre-crime cage. And I'm out here sporting around, committing horrific crimes by not talking to anyone and just driving to different locations, checking out the views, talking to you on camera, whatever, and talking about my life. Which is what you're supposed to do if something freaky is going on is tell people. Not be told you're not allowed to talk or we're going to eradicate you. Uh, What are some of the death threats I have on video? You're a snitch. You're dead. Uh, No relaxing for you, nigger. It is what it is. You better accept what we're doing to you or it's going to get a lot worse. Um... This is all supported by the judicial system. Brian Longbotham, Victoria Walker, Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, Mike Huntley. I'm a hardened criminal for starting to build cars, teaching myself how to build cars at 16. I'm a hardened criminal for building radio control cars by myself. I'm a hardened criminal for learning 3D animation by myself. Uh, I'm a hardened criminal for... Uh, getting into web, web design and creating, building adult websites, the same with normal websites, because Paul Humphrey was running around with this scam trying to make it look like I'm stealing people's codes, like code from an internet host provider, just the stupidest shit, right? Um, trying to make it, um, if I use a fragment of a photo off the internet and some Photoshop image, you stole artwork, things that nobody gives a flying fuck about, um... Every piece of artwork I've ever done is a crime or a confession of some kind of crime I'm going to commit. Um, Just pure insanity, pure absurdity. So here I am committing the out-of-control monster crime where I'm out here. Abbott, Kinney, and where am I now? Washington Boulevard and Abbott, Kimmy, whatever. Um, So I'm out here ruining all these people's lives because I'm a public nuisance just driving down the street at uh, 35 miles per hour. I'm ruining everyone's life right now. And they need to all get together and hunt me down and kill me and track my GPS and violate every aspect of privacy and hunt me down and have me killed or eradicated for today's crime of driving down wherever the hell we are now, Venice, to head it out, I guess, towards maybe Redondo or Torrance or Hermosa, that direction. Oh, Hawthorne, probably. So now we're getting closer to people that know me on the internet. Oh, their lives as well. Okay, so I'm going to cut this short. And um, until next clip. So peace out. And when I'm dead and gone and eradicated and incarcerated for life or locked in bouncy rooms, these are my horrible crimes the world will know about as to why.